Some of you may have heard of the Great Reset. What's the Great Green? What is the Great Reset? Great Reset. Um. So that. Is it a version I, of the New World Order? Is that what they're changing the name to? I. I. I from. You know how I feel about political outlooks and differences in political outlooks. I don't think it's a weakness. I think it's a strength. And I think America needs to get back to being able to have a conversation with people who don't agree. We learn so much from each other when we do that. You, I think, are going to hear and learn and question and disagree or perhaps really agree. Um... Like very few podcasts will uh, push you to. You're going to learn an awful lot. I don't know how many people know that, in fact, it seems that few people know that the diversion of profits from the arms sales to Iran to the Contras was, had a very specific purpose in replacing an ongoing Contra resupply operation known as the arms supermarket, which everyone concerned, North, Casey, and others, were afraid was about to blow sky high because it was financed with drug money from Colombia. There's so much, there is so much to this. As I said, if you start looking and asking questions about the, the very basic things, you'll find that the answers you were giving, given as a child just do not make sense. Who controls the United States government today? <coughs> Political parties, of course, the governments, the military and security services, the trade unions, youth and student organizations, women's groups, religion, cultural and professional societies, and in a very big way, the public information media. <clears throat> Reče poštovani gledalci, možda i sami često postavljate pitanje šta je humanizam, ima li među ljudima dovoljno solidarnost. The interlock capital is likely much higher, it's probably closer to 2 to 3 trillion, because that 400 billion that we've discovered was only about 25% that NASDAQ publicly lists in terms of co-investments. So 75% of, of these investments are held privately and we don't know where they are. So... <clears throat> There are many hundreds of transnational capitalist people inside the global empire of capital, but these are the 199 that are the most part of the financial core. They manage the top 17 firms. They have similar backgrounds and similar training. We'll use all the tools we have to accomplish this. The tools will be provided by their labor. We will make them hate themselves and their neighbors. We will always hide the divine truth from them that we are all one. This they must never know. They must never know that the color is an illusion. They must always think they are not equal. Drop by drop, drop by drop, we will advance in our goal. We will take over their land, resources, and wealth to exercise total control over them. We will deceive them into accepting laws that will steal the little freedom that they will have. We will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in debt. When they shall band together, they shall accuse them we shall accuse them of crimes and present a different story in the world where we shall own all the media. For we will use our media to control the flow of information and of sentiment in our favor. When they, ri when they shall rise up against us, we will crush them like insects, for they are less than that. They will be helpless to do anything, for they uh, will have no weapons. We will recruit some of their own to carry out our plans, and we will promise them eternal life, but eternal life they will never have, for they are not one of us. The recruits will be called initiates, and it will be and it will be indoctrinated to believe false rites of passage to higher realms. The members of these groups will think they are uh, they are one with us, never knowing the truth. They must never learn the truth, for they will turn against us. For their work, they will never be rewarded for, with earthly things and great titles. But never will they become immortal and join us. Never will they receive the light and travel the stars. They will never reach the higher realms, for the killing uh, of their own kind will prevent the passage of the realm of enlightenment. This they will never know. The truth will be hidden in their face so close that they will not be able to focus on until it's too late. Oh yes, so grand the illusion of freedom will be. 
but they will never know how they are our slaves. When all is in place, the reality we shall, we shall have created for them will own them. The reality will be their prison. They will live in self-delusion. When our goal is accomplished, a new era of dominion will begin. Their minds will be bound by their beliefs, the beliefs we have, been, we have established from the time immemorial. But if, we, if they ever find out that they are our, our equal, we shall perish then. This they must never know. If they ever find out that together they can vanquish us, they will take action. They must never ever find out what we have done for what they do, for what they do, for if they do, they shall have no place to run, for we shall have no place to run, for it is easy to see who we are once the veil has been fall, has fallen. Our action will have revealed, will have revealed who we are, and they will hunt us down, and no person shall give us shelter. This is the secret covenant by which we shall live the rest of our present and future lives. For this reality will transcend many generations and lifespans. This covenant is sealed by blood, our blood. We, the ones who from heaven to earth came, the fallen angels. This covenant must never ever be known to exist. It must never ever be written or spoken of. Uh, for it is the consciousness that will spawn with, will release the fury of the prime creator upon us. And we shall be cast to the depths from whence we came and remain there until the end of time of infinity. You guys can go to the abyss a thousand years. You're the evil Jesuit dragon race. suggest that oh, the, the issue of religion in any society, um, we're a world of many different peoples and yes. perhaps to defuse um, conflicts we need to learn about each other. So perhaps rather than banning religion we need to have comparative religion and then all of these religions will eventually fade into being cute kind of um, lessons of history rather than reality. Let's give power to our message, not our egos. Let's remind each other of the beautiful and unifying cause behind all of this. We want a world that honors all life. We want a world that is fair for everyone. We want peace. We all want to stop surviving and start living. We want to be free. At that time, you will have the opportunity to pledge your allegiance to the Prince and receive the economic mark. And those that refuse to receive the mark will be considered outside the new world order and an enemy of the state. Any questions? Yeah. Well, get ready. You're going to see this spooky word, cabal, a few min million times. He lists 389 of them. Oh, and look, here it is. I can show it to you in the New York Times. Then we have the facilitators of capital. Those are the people on the, the Council of 30 and the Trilateral Commission who facilitate, make policies for capital's free flow and investment with no interference from governments anywhere in the world. Oh, and there it is in the Daily Beast. And then we have the protectors of capital. That's the Atlantic Council and their use of the military intelligence, NATO, and the U.S. military empire worldwide to protect capital investment and its free flow. And CapEx. Oh. We have the managers of global capital. That's 199 folks that um, are on the board of directors of the 17 giants. Oh, let's check the BBC. Over 200 billion a year is spent on private security, employing some 15 million people. Check this out. Quote. We see these demands as allowing for the abandonment of nation state rights altogether by occupations, wars, trade, trade agreements, and enforced economic rules. Any questions? Thank you, Professor. I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hitchens. The next four Mr. Hitchens. Thank you, Professor. 
I think that the um, organizers of this meeting are to be congratulated on their brio and also I think on their timing. Um, 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 if enlightened self-interest is the principle of all morality, um, um, like Comrade Judas, I also believe that capitalism is the harbinger of socialism, that it's necessary not merely to contest or negate its ethical claims, but to transcend them, to build upon them. And from this, if I may coin a phrase, dialectic, I think we might get a truly human and unillusioned morality that was free from superstition or religion. On that realizable aspiration, I rest my case. Who controls the United States government today? Humanity is divided into the 1%, the upper 1%, and the, particularly the upper 1,000th of 1%, several thousand people in the very elite group. 20% which have jobs and incomes and are often described as middle class working people, professionals. And the 80% where wealth <clears throat> really doesn't exist at all. Who controls the United States government today? And as an algorithm becomes powerful, whoever owns the algorithm may be able to concentrate fantastic amounts of wealth that no human can afford to defend themselves in that market. Correct. This is, this is it. So if we, if we all realize that, then we wouldn't allow all, this thing, all these things that are going on. It's all about um, control. There are a small group of people who want to control the world. And because there's so many of us out there, you know, they can't control us directly. They can't, you know, this small group of people can't, um, you know, come round to all of us and, and control us directly. So they must use our own minds, our own hearts and minds against ourselves. And this is what they've done. They've, they've educated us into this world, uh, into this globe spinning, you know, heliocentric Big Bang evolution world, uh, which makes us nothing. Who controls the United States government today? But there are three tiers as far as the dynasty of families is concerned, from the Rothschilds and the New World Order. Who controls the United States government today? The Rockefellers, the Harrimans, the Morgans, the uh, George Herbert Walker Bush family. Uh, George Herbert Walker was president. Who controls the United States government today? The Secretary General of the United Nations, the President of the European Central Bank, the Managing Director of the International Monetary Fund, George Soros, World Trade Union leaders, Chief Executives of all the big tech companies, and representatives of non-government organizations like Greenpeace and the World Wildlife Fund. System. I was under the impression that the banks themselves were American banks and it was the federal government that owned the banks. Are you telling me that, that our government itself doesn't own these banks? Well, our government doesn't own anything. We really don't have a government. We're just a colony of England. Today, how can I say that that, or how can you tell me that's a part of a colony of Great Britain? Well, you see, we started out as a colony of Great Britain, and then, presumably, we won political independence uh, in the uh, American Revolution. But you see, uh, the American Revolution was not against the bank. The American Re uh, Revolution was against King George III. So we won against King George III, but we didn't win against uh, the Bank of England, of which King George III was a major stockholder. So King George lost this wonderful colony over here, but he retained the banking control and continued to uh, get his interest and his profits from uh, his American colony, just as before. And we had one party government ever since. Who controls the United States government today? The British royal family composed really of the old surviving aristocracies of Europe you govern a country, that's through economic policy and foreign policy. London still runs the United States. 
See, London is still the world market of the world bankers. Not Washington, not New York, and not Tokyo, and not Berlin, but it's uh, London. Добрый вечер. Здравствуйте, товарищи. Эндрю Хэмилтон Who controls the United States government today? Prince Charles, Al Gore, and climate child Greta Thunberg. Who controls the United States government today? Well, David Rockefeller did during the 1940s. Who controls the United States government today? Is loosely known as capitalists. That was carrying out the original Nazi program. And we haven't had a revolution since. <laughs> Who controls the United States government today? Citizens for a bleaker America, a leading no values political action group. We believe they have no soul. Who controls the United States government today? Colonel Mandel House, whose father was a Rothschild agent during the Civil War. Bush family has very deep ties to Nazi Germany. The people of Arkansas, bankers and politicians and political leaders and... Uh, uh, Who controls the United States government today? It, the American cl upper class is complex and competitive. It perpetuates itself through interacting families of high social standing with similar lifestyles, corporate affiliations, membership in elite clubs and, and private schools. The American ruling class has also long been determined to be mostly self-perpetuating, maintaining its influence through policy-making institutions such as the National Association of Manufacturers, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Business Council, the Business Roundtable, the Conference Board, the American Enterprise Institute, Council of Foreign Relations, and a number of other policy groups that are U.S. oriented. Who controls the United States government today? Well, it's a conglomerate of various criminal enterprises. There are many criminal enter enterprises in the United States. Some are quite large and some are quite small. That comprise corporate, military, and government elites in a centralized power structure motivated by class interests and working in unison through higher circles of contact and agreement. This is, this is amazing. We are now, the U.S. is now deployed in 70% of the nations in the world and a Special Operations Command has troops in 147 countries. About this um, an 80% increase since 2010. 
Emerging from these multinational corporations is a transnational capitalist class whose loyalties and interests are still rooted in their corporations but are increasingly international in scope. Those who, quote, decide whatever is decided of major consequence. And uh, to him, the bankers were Satan incarnate. They were robbing and looting this country. They were oppressing the people. They were causing financial uh, depression and widespread suffering. And he said, I'm going to go after them. And he did. Unfortunately, the history books do not tell you why he did anything that he did. The Rockefellers and the Harrimans and the Brown brothers, did they all work together as far as this new world order is concerned? Well, the new world order is a group of insiders. It's sort of an international mafia. And they either work together or they get eliminated. I mean, these people have to cooperate because the death sentence is automatic if you don't. Well, uh, there was a family of moneylenders in Frankfurt, Germany, named Bauer, which means peasant. And why these moneylenders were trying to call themselves peasants, I don't know, because none of them had ever been near a plow in their life. And so uh, they were moneylenders. And uh, they needed some... Uh, way of advertising their business and so the founder of this dynasty the house of Rothschild uh, put up a red shield above his door so that people who came from various parts of Europe to uh, to change money with him uh, could find it and so uh, after uh, a few years uh, people don't, didn't know any, who Bauer was but they knew the Rothschild the red shield was Rothschild and so uh, he simply began to call himself Rothschild Okay, now, he, uh, he died eventually, but uh, did he leave a dynasty of some sort? I mean, how did this happen? Well, he left five sons who were very well trained by this man, who by that time had become the outstanding uh, money lender of Europe, due to a very peculiar circumstance. King George III and the Bank of England wanted to pub punish uh, the American colonists for being so obstreperous and for refusing to give all of their profits to the Bank of England from their income. And so uh, uh, when they re rebelled, then the British army did not really want to fight their American cousins. So uh, King George said, well, I've got to get somebody else to fight this war. I need some mercenaries, some hired soldiers. And over in Germany, the Elector of Hesse, a German province, had a very well-trained group of uh, soldiers called the Hessians. And so he said, uh, well, I'll rent these out to you, King George, who was a German himself, by the way, a Hanover. And uh, uh, he said, uh, for $5 million, you can have this nice army. And so George said, all right. And then when the Elector of Hesse got this $5 million, uh, he said, what am I going to do with it? And they said, well, this, uh, there's a very good uh, investor and financial advisor named Meyer Amschel Rothschild there in Frankfurt. So he let uh, Meyer Amschel lend out this money, which was the biggest chunk of capital in Europe at that time, $5 million. And mm -hmm. so... Uh, Amschel spread it around, and pretty soon he brought back uh, $20 million uh, to the elector, who was very pleased, and uh, kept $5 million for, him, for his efforts. So now he was a monetary power himself, and of course the elector of Hesse let it be known that if you had money to invest, uh, put it in Meyer Amschel's hands. So when Meyer died, he had five sons, and uh, so they dispersed themselves over the five capitals of Europe, and Nathan uh, went to London. James went to Paris and so forth. So they now had total control of the monetary resources of Western civilization, the entire continent of Europe. We're talking about the Brotherhood of Death here, the Skull and Bones crowd. Um, Illuminati fraternity uh, established in 1848 as the Russell Trust by Daniel Coit Gilman. Uh, all of these char so-called charitable foundations, which were simply secret instruments of the world order. International Monetary Fund, the World Trade Organization, the World Bank, the International Bank of Settlements, the Federal Reserve Board, the G7, and the G20. Most attend the World Economic Forum in Davos. Many of the, many of the 199 have been keynote speakers there. So, the, and the World Economic Forum is not a policy-making body. It's in Davos, Switzerland, January of every year. Two or 3,000 people go. They, it's up at 5,000 foot elevation. And the top 1,000 corporations in the world are invited to send people. And they can send as many as five, as long as one is a woman.
It's where these thousands of elites in the world, 3,000 attended in 2017, um, they're getting to hear from top investors and top policy people in the world. The president of China was there last year. Feeling of, boy, I'm really special because I'm here. I'm in Davos. Kind of the same thing I saw at the Bohemian Grove, where the 2,000 plus men meet every year. And it's just all men there. They don't even have a, a quota for women. And, um, but they don't make policy either. They just get together, applaud each other, hear talks and speeches, and, uh, uh, and feel good about it all. It wasn't like I'm in a different realm. I was processed the realm. It was like, I've seen all my lives live over and over again. I was like, what am I? Who has control of me? Where I can't, I'm not even control of myself. I'm not living. I'm, not, I'm in this dream world. Maybe those were lives. They were teleporting themselves through the universe, living out as me, as they had my soul. I don't know. But when it got down to it, and I was dissolving, and I knew when I tried to wake up again, and it happened again, I was just going to give up. I was going to go to sleep forever. I was, wasn't going to keep running around and coming back to me. And I saw what was going to happen, and then I, something happened, and I cried out to, like, love to God as to something higher. And the sky in this realm cracked, and the light projected down and bounced off the faces of these Archon beings, and into me, into my vision was projected angels. It was the Archon beings that dressed as anything that they want to, except they were loving. They came to me as shit, the beings that I would uh, be comfortable with. And they were clean, they were pure, they were blown. The, the other people, they're normal, they look, you know, the Illuminati, they, they look normal in like ritual folks. And the, these things that came through were like clean, shining, pretty humans. There was no essence, evil essence on them in it at all. Now in our research, we identify the people on the boards of directors of the top 17 asset management firms of the world. These firms have an in excess of $1 trillion in management. These 17 firms collectively have 199 directors on their boards. We think that this group of 199 individuals represents the financial core of the world's transnational capitalist class. Uh, but uh, I found out when I wrote that book that the main uh, mission of the uh, banks was to start wars. And I found out also that it is very difficult to start a war. And so forth. So when you talk about 50 times that, managed by just a few hundred people, it's a massive amount of very solid, consolidated wealth that every government institution, every president, every president of European countries, every, all the intelligence agencies want to protect. That's what American capitalism is about, is protecting that wealth. It was fake. It was fake. It was absolutely fake. There's not too many people involved in this. I mean, literally, it's a, it's a money-making scheme. Dobry wieczór. Oto wiadomości. Informacje napływające z różnych stron kraju świadczą o coraz bardziej normalnym rytmie pracy załóg zdecydowanej większości zakładów. United Nations will continue to stand for the truth and against lies, bigotry, antisemitism and hatred. Our best tribute to those who died in the Holocaust is the creation of a world of equality, justice and dignity for all. Thank <laughs> you.